For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. Welcome to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. I'm Michelle, and I'm schizophrenic. I'm Gabe. I'm bipolar. And Gabe, tell me about your balls. <laughs> We're not talking about my genitalia, but we are talking about Gabe and Michelle's decision about children. So I, I've made the decision not to have children and that I've, I've had a vasectomy. I'm, I'm over 40. So that, that die has been cast. Michelle, on the other hand, is significantly younger. Did you, that, that's actually a good question. Michelle, ha, have you decided to have children? You know, I really hate that question. Like just as a woman, you're always asked, are you going to have kids? You know? Especially when you're like in your 30s, like 30, 31, you're like, are you going to have kids? So when are you going to have kids? And I've known people that have gone to the gynecologist and they kind of said like, oh, I'm not planning on having kids. And the, the gynecologist has, has said things like, well, you're a woman. That's what you're supposed to do. Supposed so to do? Like yes. you're just an incubator for human life. That's your yes. only function in the yes. world. My only, my only thing in life is to cook a baby and pop it out. So there's also the the factor of, I'm a woman, so I always get asked if I'm going to have kids, and then I'm mentally ill, so it's, do you really want to have kids? Because what if you pass it on? That's an interesting juxtaposition that you're talking about there, because as we know, our society is a lot of misogyny in our society. Now, this isn't a feminist podcast, so we don't want to fall too far down the rabbit hole, but I think many young women agree that their reproductive status being made public is annoying, because yes. people want women to have babies. But then when you have mental illness, all of the sudden, they take all that away. They want yeah. all women to have babies, but you. Exactly. You're double stigmatized. Yeah. So it's like, I'm supposed to have kids, but now, no, don't have any kids. You wouldn't want to pass that on to your child. Then I'm just like, are you going to pass on your like bitchiness to your child? Leave me alone. <laughs> Let's pretend that both of us agree to have children tomorrow. Not with each other. Not with need... each other. Not with no. each other. Could you imagine that child? Oh my God. Oh my God. It'd be like a, a gigantic redheaded Jew. <laughs> I think our child would be a superhero or something. Oh. <laughs> but for, for the purposes of this little segment right here, we've decided to have children. Not together. <laughs> what part of us should be worried about that? I mean, we, we know the stats, you know, you can just Google, what are the odds of me passing along bipolar disorder? What are the odds of me passing along schizophrenia? So we know there's a chance. The chance changes based on who your actual partner is, but there is a chance. Let's say this is not a real number, but that chance is 25%. You have a 25% chance of passing on schizophrenia, Michelle. So there's a 75% chance that your children have no symptoms whatsoever. They have no schizophrenia. Do you want to have children? Is that worth the risk? 25? Oh, yeah, totally. So now what if you had four kids? It's different because every time. Be wanna... No, because every time you have a kid, it's still 25%. Just like if you're having a boy or a girl, it starts again at 50%. Very true. I'm impressed that you know that, which makes me a dick. But the... <laughs> <laughs> you're such a dick. I know. I know. Just don't text that to our friends anymore. <laughs> But it is a risk. I, I mean, if you were a mom and your child had a 25% chance of something bad happening to them if they rode a roller coaster, would you let your child ride the roller coaster? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's say that roller coasters had a 25% chance of maiming your child. I mean, you sound like my Jewish mother right now. Like, <laughs> no, let I just me, sound let like me live. Who's risk adverse. Let a, let a bitch live. Like, come on. So, so you're really like by the odds. So if you had a 49% chance of dying and a 51% chance of living, the odds are in your favor, you would do it. Even with I a 49% mean, wait, chance of do, dying. Do, do what? Do what? It doesn't matter. Just, it doesn't matter. You just, I, I, have, I have an activity. It looks like fun. You have a 51% chance of living, a 49% chance of dying. Go. Um, do you say I yes mean, or no? I, I, I'm not really sure about that one. But... Because, it, because the odds are getting closer. Yeah. But 25% doesn't scare you at all. No, 25 doesn't scare me. What about 35? No. Really? Because what is helping me, I've been watching Little Women LA. It's about little people that live in LA, of course. And when they have kids, it's a 50-50% chance of having a little little person or an average size height. And that doesn't stop them. doesn't stop them at all. And I so much respect people like that. Truth be told, I, I, re, I respect you for this, Michelle, because I, I, I ran like a coward. 
I was so terrified of passing bipolar disorder and psychosis and anxiety onto a child. I literally had a vasectomy. I didn't even make the decision not to have kids. I went in for surgery to make sure that I didn't accidentally have kids because the idea of creating a life that would suffer like I have was just more that I could I could stand. How old were you? I was 27. Isn't that, why would a doctor do that for a 27 year old? Remember at the beginning of the show when you talked about, you know, misogyny and all of that stuff? Yeah. See, if a 27 year old woman wants to have her tubes tied, they're like, oh no, that's wrong. You need to talk to your husband. You're, you're going to regret it. When a 27 year old man wants to have a vasectomy, they're like, that makes sense. He's made a decision. He's in control of his body. Really? Yeah, I had no problem getting a vasectomy whatsoever. Was that painful? I gotta know. I mean, they did cut open my testicles. It wasn't fun. <laughs> How long was the recovery? A week. I know this is kind of a really personal question, but this is what our podcast does. Michelle, you're in prime fertile years. You could have a baby tomorrow, no problem. But you are getting close. You you are getting close to when it's going to be harder to get pregnant, etc. Are are you planning on being a mom? Will Michelle Hammer have a little child that's a human? Don't don't tell me about your hamster. (laughs) I have a hamster. Are we going to get a Michelle Hammer child? Are you going to be a mom? A baby hammer? You know, I can barely take care of myself. So, I mean, I, I have to make sure that I can take care of myself before I have a child to take care of. Maybe I can have a baby and then, like, give it to my mom and then she can give it back to me when it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you can barely take care of yourself. I love you, Michelle. And that's just not true. It's not true. You You do live with schizophrenia and that is a very difficult disease to manage and you manage it. You live alone. You don't have a caregiver. Nobody takes care of you. In you know, you don't live in a group home. You not you are in fact taking care of yourself. So when you say that you need to learn how to take care of yourself, this has nothing to do with your schizophrenia. You're just kind of wild. That's a deliberate choice that you're making. You're not sick. Yeah, but like if a baby's crying in the middle of the night, I'll just be like, "Go back to bed. I'm taking a nap." you really think you'd be that way i know you are joking but honestly would you let a child it's not even okay it's not even your child at this point all right you're at a friend's house and you're babysitting and a little nine month old is crying do you actually let the nine month old suffer no i bet no 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 why are you trying to pretend that you're just like this uncaring person that would torture babies no i i I hang out with you know my little cousin babies and my friend's kids and you know we have some fun we color play spider-man and whatever but then i'm like glad that i get to leave And, and that's perfectly understandable that's i'm not saying that when i spend time with my granddaughter or my and see that's gonna blow everybody's mind See, people are like, wait, I thought he said he didn't have kids. No, I have loophole grandchildren. Because you're a fake granddaddy. That's so mean. I am not fake. There is nothing about my relationship with Lenny that is fake. You're not her real granddaddy. I am absolutely her real grandfather. I am not her biological grandfather. Okay, fine. Sure, whatever. Fine. You're a grandpa. You want to be old like that? Fine. You're a grandpa, old man. That really ages you. Calling yourself grandpa makes you, like, seem really old. I- I'm waiting for you to think about the audience. Oh, yeah, okay. How are you a grandfather if you don't have kids? A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I joined a program called Big Brothers and Big Sisters, where I met this precocious little six-year-old. And uh, we have been in each other's lives for, wow, a, a long time, o- o- over... 18 years now. He, he lived with me for a bit. I've done things for him. I've been involved with him in a very meaningful, deliberate, and lasting way for almost two decades now. And uh, nine months ago, he became a dad. And Did you uh, teach him the birds and the bees? I did. I did. I gave him the talk. So that's how he learned how to make a baby that you're now a grandpa to? I mean, I think that's how he learned not to be pregnant in high school. Uh, There's clearly maybe a little more teaching that I could have done because I was really worried about him getting somebody pregnant when he was a teenager. That's that's not the point. One, the mother of his child is probably one of the most wonderful and coolest people that I have ever met. And I sincerely hope that they get married someday. I, I really do. And not because I have like some religious reason of, oh, you're living together, cohabitate. Like, no, I want her to be like officially in my family. She is unofficially in because we love her. But for real, I will be so incredibly happy if they get married. But, you know, Taylor is like a son to me. He he really is. I feel about him that way. And when he had 
a baby that makes that child like a granddaughter to me. And we just went with it because, you know, a lot of times when you live with mental illness and when you have trauma in your childhood and when people ebb and flow in and out of your life, sometimes you have to make your own family. And we embraced this and we did. Listen, my biological father isn't around either. Uh, I was raised by my real dad, not my biological one. And we believe in this very much because if we didn't, we've just got a whole bunch of fractures. We don't want a whole bunch of fractures. We want a whole bunch of very meaningful relationships. But to your point, Michelle, you are right. I am not a biological grandfather, but I do think I'm a real one. Oh, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I don't feel bad. I'm clarifying. Sponsors make the show go. We're going to hear from them now. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. And we're back talking about whether Gabe and I are going to have kids, but not with each other. Michelle, you do have a lot of kids in your life, though. You you referenced a, a cousin. I don't think that your brother has any children, but there, there's young kids in your life that you hang out and play with. I see pictures on social media of you teaching them how to do art projects and crafts, which is something that is really near and dear to your heart. So clearly you want to spend time with them. I, I don't think anybody's making you. I know. Well, my baby cousin Atlas, like she's three now, but like up until this age, she hated me. She hated really? She would never talk to me. She would turn her head away from me. She was scared of me. And now she likes me. I don't know. She was such a hater. Like for the longest time, I was like, I don't like her either. Whatever. Get her away from me. But now she likes me. I love that you got in a fight with a Yeah, well, you know what? I don't know what her problem was. Has anybody ever told you that you can't be in their children's life because of your mental illness? No, not at all. This, this happened to me a very long time ago. Again, before I made the decision not to have kids, somebody who I was very close to told me that, that I could no longer babysit their children uh, because they didn't trust me because I had bipolar disorder and that I could only see their kids for small amounts of time, very supervised. And, and it hurt me very, very much. And to this day that impacted my decision. When I made the decision not to have kids, I looked at these parents because I think they're good parents. I think they're reasonable people. I loved their children. And I thought, wow, they don't want me to be around children. Maybe they're right. So that, that impacted me very deeply too. And there's all kinds of stories of people being told that they can't be around their children because of their mental health issues. And that's scary because it might be reasonable. Listen, Michelle, I don't have any children, but if you were actively suicidal, if you were actively depressed, if you were experiencing psychosis, obviously I would not leave you alone with my child. But where do you draw that line? In parents' defense, you know, that's really hard. They don't want to risk their children in any way. I understand that. That's reasonable. But what they said and how they tabled it hurt me very, very deeply. To this day. I haven't tried to work with kids since I started telling people that I had schizophrenia. I figured it would probably not be a good thing to do. I was a swim instructor lifeguard for six summers, and being a schizophrenic lifeguard is very, very interesting. You ever just stare at a pool trying to count how many people are in a pool, but yet you're going delusional at the exact same time? That's fun. That's real fun. Oh, yeah. But you are describing a scenario before recovery. Yeah. If you were if you were doing this today, would that be a problem today for you? I don't think I could go back to where I was working, no. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think where I was working at the sleepaway camp that I was last working at, I don't think they would want me back. I really don't. Now, would they not want you back? Or do you feel that you can't go back? And by feel you can't go back, like, do you think that because of your illness, this isn't a choice I think you? because of my illness, it's not a choice. I think... I really don't think they would allow me back at that camp, knowing. But if they would allow you back, do you think that you could do it? If they told you that it was up to you, what do you, Michelle Hammer, feel you can do? I I think I could I think I could do it. I think I could, but I I think that 
like the people in charge wouldn't want any of the campers to know. I think it would have to be kept a secret. And that's yeah. really painful. I don't think I could yeah. go back working there at all. No, actually. Do you miss it? Is it is it is something that you you miss? It was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun working there. Sleepaway camp is really, 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 really fun. Sleepaway camp with a mental illness is really crazy and fun. But, you know, after telling all of the world you have schizophrenia, trying to go back, I, I don't think that would be an easy time. And how much of that do you think is reasonable? I think it's a little bit reasonable. Because I think there'd be a lot of rumors, a lot of questions, a lot of mistrust, stigma. A lot of people wouldn't really understand. I really think they wouldn't want the campers to know. And that's really, really tough because it, on one hand, what you're describing is a situation where you want to keep the kids safe. And you're saying, look, maybe I'm not the best choice because I have an illness. You know, for example, we wouldn't hire a blind lifeguard. That doesn't mean that we're stigmatizing the blind. It, it might not necessarily be that they're stigmatizing people who live with schizophrenia by not wanting them to go to sleepaway camp. But on the other hand, one of the things that you said is they wouldn't want any of the campers to know that you had schizophrenia. What if well, the camper... If they hired a blind cook, I mean, they, they wouldn't care if people knew that their, their cook had, you know, issues with seeing or hearing or was in a wheelchair. So it's, this is really, because really Because all that has to happen is for one of those campers to tell their parents, parent complains, done, done. One parent complains and it's done. And this is a burden that people with mental illness have to face every Absolutely. single day. Yeah. And, and sometimes they have to face it in their own families. So your, your family is is really, really cool. They let you hang out with all the kids. You know, I imagine that Aunt Michelle is probably the coolest aunt in the entire I think world. so. I think so. And as longtime listeners of the show know, Uncle Gabe is just a complete badass. All of my nieces and nephews, they absolutely adore me. I'm the one that lets them get away with murder. I'm the one that gives them extra helpings of uh, dessert, even though their parents specifically looked me in the eyes and said, Gabe, do not give my child candy. I'm the one handing them candy. My brother and sister just accept it because, hey, they know who I am. And, and I've had a lot of fun with it. But one thing that they've never done, nobody in my family has ever done, is kept their kids away from me. And in fact, they've explained to all of their children from, man, birth, that Uncle Gabe lives with bipolar disorder. They just know. My, my little niece is four years old and she wears my bipolar shirt. She has your wristband <laughs> right now. And we went to an art place the other day here in Columbus, the 14th largest city, and we did art and everybody agreed that the children were either going to be great artists like Michelle or schizophrenic <laughs> like Michelle, which, which is, you know, it's the humor that fits into our family. We're not, we're not rooting for schizophrenia, but they acknowledge it very openly and conversationally. You, you know, my, my four-year-old niece has heard about concepts like living with bipolar disorder and living with schizophrenia and the stigma that goes with it. And she's four. She's just going to grow up knowing what this is and not being worried or afraid about it at all and in a position to be like a really powerful ally. That's great. I think so, because she's probably going to pick my nursing home since I made the decision not to have kids. <laughs> or you can pick my nursing home, Michelle. You're, you're quite a bit younger than uh, me. In the 14th largest city? Probably should find me a good one. Or you could move me to New York with your millions. Oh, my millions? I mean, don't you make like $80 million a year? Oh, yeah, totally. I make like $80 million. I'm like on the cover of Forbes. You don't even know. It's fascinating to me that people reference Schizophrenic NYC, which is your clothing line. That's a web address, schizophrenic.nyc. You can go check out our designs and buy them. And they think that it's a multi-million dollar company. Now, your company is doing fantastic, but it's safe to say that you're not going to be in the mall anytime soon. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. That makes me feel so great. People also hear that I published a book, Mental Illness is an Asshole, and they're like, oh, oh, you have a book where you talk about living with mental illness in a constructive way and family members can read it and understand better? You must be a millionaire on the New York Times bestseller We're list. We're giving all of our, you know, our assets to our children. That's why. We have made good money selling our books and and our clothing, but they, they always compare us to like these multinational companies. I have not sold as many books as Harry Potter. <laughs> Wait, Harry Potter doesn't sell books at all. <laughs> It's the, it's the wizardry. It's the wizardry. Are your designs ever going to be like an Abercrombie and Fitch or Gap? Well, they do their own designs. I'd have to have my own store. 
What would your own store in the mall Schizophrenic be called? Schizophrenic NYC. But what about like if it was in Columbus, Ohio, the 14th largest city? <laughs> well, from the first largest city to the 14th largest city, I just don't even know. Schizophrenic USA. Well, but if you put one in each one, you could own 14 stores. Now you have a chain. You're thinking too oh, small. Oh, I, I have to, what's that called? You know, franchise? Franchise. Like Dunkin' Donuts? What if you sold your designs in Dunkin' Donuts? Like, don't be paranoid. You look great. Eat a donut. Don't you love when it's Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins at the same time? So you can get donuts and ice cream? Yes. I love the flight of ideas we have here. It's an interesting point that you brought up, Michelle, that, that women are constantly pressured to have children until they find out that you have a serious and persistent mental illness. Now, now you and I made completely different decisions. I, I decided that I could not be a parent because I didn't want to pass on the illness. You feel significantly differently. That's amazing to me. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I, I would have thought that everybody in my shoes would have come to the identical conclusion. And I, I'm really impressed and, and proud of you for not. It's cool and it's brave. And I am neither of those things. I don't think it's cool or brave. I just think I am me. I'm going to do me, whatever happens happens and I'm not going to be scared of something till I actually make a decision. I'm not ready for kids right now, but I'm not, you know, canceling them out in the future. I'm not going to decide right now. Why do I have to do that? I don't know what the future is going to bring for me. Maybe I'll have kids. Maybe I'll have 50 kids. Maybe I'll have zero kids. Maybe I'll have two kids, three kids, four kids, five kids, seven fish, one fish, two fish, blue fish, you know, we'll see. Who knows? Again, I know that you think that it's not brave, but I, I do respect that even though many people in the world, and we do know that there's many people, are putting pressure on you not to have children because you live with schizophrenia, you're saying that if I feel that I am able, I'm going to do it. And if you ever do have children, you will have brought people into the world that otherwise wouldn't have been here if you would have listened to society. So, hey, if I ever meet little Michelle Hammers... <laughs> I will be terrified, <laughs> but I do think that it would be cool. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this episode of A Bipolar, A Schizophrenic, and A Podcast. If you haven't jumped over to schizophrenic.nyc and checked out Michelle's designs, you are really missing out. You should go to gabehoward.com and check out Mental Illness is an Asshole. It's a cool book, and I'll sign it if you order it directly from me. We will see you next week where we will talk about whatever the fuck we want. Kids! 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 You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to Schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to PsychCentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely. So were you just like had some painful balls for like a week? Yeah, I put peas on them. Peas? Like, cool, yeah, like iced peas from the... So you peed on your balls? No, peas, like like, like the vegetable. Just, I, don't, I don't know what's happening here. Well, I hate you so much right now. Yeah. Why, well, your comebacks are spot on today. What can I say? Um, spotted. Wow. You want to try that again? You look like Peppy right now. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs>